Here at the University of Minnesota, we provide really comprehensive urologic care to, to the complete spectrum of urology patients. We have nationally and internationally recognized experts in, in nearly all subspecialties of urology and provide that care uh, to a broad base of patients uh, locally and uh, regionally and even nationally. Our university, the medical school, the University of Minnesota Physicians Practice Plan and M Health Fairview, our health system partner, decided to engage in a multi-year transformation to make our organizations more anti-racist, but really more broadly, to become more inclusive in general. And in order to do this, they convened the HOPE Commission, which stands for Healing, Opportunity, People, and Equity. So at this point, the HOPE Commission has been in existence for a little over a year. And over that period of time, we have developed um, a work plan. An important piece of that is making sure that we're providing care to, again, to marginalized groups. And uh, among those groups would be, again, those with significant disabilities and also uh, tr our transgender population, which is a, a growing part of our practice uh, and one uh, that uh, we are uh, increasingly focusing on. I am ridiculously excited that I fell into the U of M program. And so one of the things I've appreciated about the U is that they have absolutely taken into account the outcomes and, and the body that I want to be able to have. Here at the University of Minnesota, we have the Center for Human Sexuality. Uh, it's a great partnership that we have because we educate each other, we work together in collaboration. Uh, to really care for our patients in a global way. A third of transgender patients claim to have experienced discrimination in healthcare systems. And a third of transgender patients will postpone care even when sick or injured because of this mistrust and, and stigma and fear of being outed or, or being discriminated against. Uh, the Institute for Sexual and Gender Health, which is formerly known as the Program in Human Sexuality, has actually been supporting transgender and diverse communities since the 1970s. And we were actually one of the first academic medicine clinics uh, that worked to advocate and support sexual and gender minorities. In my role, I write letters of referral. I provide gender-affirming connections to medical interventions, you know, things like hormones and surgery and I provide psychotherapeutic support both before and after medical interventions. As a therapist, I work with gender diverse communities on a whole host of concerns that may or may not include medical interventions, but when we do work with surgeons, we see our role as promoting an easeful and supportive and kind of affirming process. Our goal is to have a broad, uh, comprehensive gender care center here with the full array of surgical options. So as a urologist, I offer uh, for feminizing surgery, vaginoplasty, both full depth and minimal depth using state-of-the-art techniques, including robotic uh, canal dissection, peritoneal flaps, skin grafts. We also offer all forms of revision surgery available. For masculinizing surgery, we have been offering phalloplasty in a staged approach using arm or thigh flap. Um, in conjunction with the plastic surgeons and all the subsequent stages including urethro, lengthening, implant surgery, or any revisions needed. I came to the U of M because I had a recurring urethral stricture that showed up in 2015 as a result of uh, surgery with another institution and the U of M has been awesome about trying to resolve said urethral stricture. So the biggest impact that the treatment I've gotten at the U of M has had is allowing me to minimize my dysphoria, to maximize both the aesthetic and functional elements of my anatomy while still trying to resolve the stricture. Uh, we could have, quote, solved my problem years ago with a more invasive, uh, less ideal outcome for me. Uh, but I've been really happy with the level of stick to that the surgeons at the U, and Dr. Pariser in particular, have shown to be like, hey, we want to get you as close to ideal as possible. As we move forward uh, into the future, it's going to become uh, increasingly important that all patients 
have a sense of belonging when they're receiving their medical care. And here at the University of Minnesota, we're putting a focus on that. We are working with our colleagues to make sure that all the needs of our patients are met. And it's important that we provide a sense of equity, which is different from a sense of equality. Lots of different groups of people start out at different places due to structural inequalities in our society, and we need to make sure that we are providing the adequate resources such that everybody has the same outcomes and not just simply applying the same inputs to everybody. So this is an important concept that, uh, that I, I want to make sure that we communicate and this is our, this is our focus at the University of Minnesota.